Hey all my Crimsonites and welcome to the Crimson Cure channel where we embrace our femininity, increase our womanly values, and celebrate our brothers. So join me on our feminine journey to learn, heal, and grow. Hey y'all, Donnie Keith here, aka Auntie Peaches from the Auntie's Radio Show, also on The Voice of Reason. I'm here to say that ever since my man started taking A game, he's been on top of his A game. What? When I say A game, I mean his A game. He's more focused. He's definitely working out more. His attitude is better. And he's not complaining of all over body aches due to poor blood circulation because A-game provides great blood circulation. If you know what I mean, ladies, that blood circulation. Sometimes I have to hide the A-game in the bushes when I'm out walking the dog just because I want some sleep. (laughs) If you know what I mean, ladies. Stay on top of your A-game. Fellas, get your A game. Hey there, my Crimson Knights, and welcome to the Crimson Cure channel. I am your host, femininity coach and author, The Crimson Cure, and this is my perspective. So, you know, usually I have some type of story or some type of video or something like that to share with you guys. Not today. Today, I just got facts to share with you. I just got facts to share with black women today. And you can see the title, Why Black Women Can't Be Saved from the Failed Culture. You know, I've been hitting it hard this week. Black women, black culture. And some of you may be wondering why is she hitting it so hard like this? It's, you know, I'm coming back at it. I'm coming back at it from this perspective, that perspective, things of that nature. And I'm trying to hammer home an understanding that black women need to have. You need to have an understanding about value. You need to have an understanding about who you are as women, who you should have been as a woman and why you're in the state that you're in. And why you can't be saved because you're so entrenched in these ideologies. This is why I've been hitting it so hard about the truth and about falsehood, about insight, about the oversight, about the past and the hindsight and not having the foresight. The reason I've been hitting this so hard is because if we don't understand this, we cannot come out. None of us can come out. Do you understand this? Your foremothers started this oversight stuff. And black women as a whole have been so honorary as to not be able to say that was a mistake that we need to correct. You've doubled down, tripled down, quadrupled down on the terrible oversights. You cannot take correction. That's the real problem. You don't take correction from nowhere. You don't take it from men You don't take it from black men, especially, and you don't take none from a higher power. God, whether you call yourself a Christian, a Muslim, uh, uh, you deal in just spirituality or whatever your spiritual system is supposed to be or whatever you think it is. You won't take 
the correction from it. You won't take the truth from it. Like I told Lizzo, and that wasn't just for Lizzo. That wasn't just for her. You can't get saved in the lies. And when I say saved, I don't mean from a religious standpoint. I mean, you, you're you going to perish right along with this dying culture that you keep trying to support. You tripling down on something that I heard in this space that black women suffer from. And it actually goes deeper than that. They suffer, suffer from shame, guilt, and the need to be right. And that need to be right is literally killing you. You dying for the need to be right. None of you have the courage. You up here talking about how strong you are, but y'all are some of the weakest women I have ever known because you don't have the courage to accept no part of the truth that casts you in any kind of light that you don't want to be cast in. And I personally don't have any understanding about living your life in a mindset, in a spiritual way that don't allow the light of no truth to come to you so that you can get some clarity, so you can understand where you are in this system, where this stuff is going and how to actually correct course for your survival. You talk a lot about what well, we doing stuff to survive and we doing, but you dying. You already killed the community. Do you realize that you took your kids and you just murdered their future? Do you realize that by being in constant rebellion to male authority because you can't stop with the whole narrative where black men don't build and black men don't have this and black men don't get. But for all of that talk, you stay getting pregnant by these same men that you claim are not good enough for you to marry and be led by, but you, they were good enough for you to lay down, crack open them legs and replicate him out of your womb. And you don't take no responsibility for none of that. Told you, I ain't got no story for you. I just got facts for you today. You don't take no responsibility for not a single ounce of that. Everything is his fault. Nothing is your fault. Nothing. You don't want to hear about correction. You don't want to hear it from men. You don't want to hear it from women. You don't want to hear it from Zaddy. You don't want to hear it from God. So when you wrong, how do you correct? If correction don't never is never welcome, how do you ever get to a point where you say, oh, wait a minute, I was wrong. And somebody be able to pull your coattail to say, uh-uh, you're going the wrong way. And this is why. Because what that tells me is that you think you've never been wrong. And I don't personally, personally, I can't understand how any group of black women can come together and say, you know what? We're not wrong while your children are undereducated, while they're getting shot in the streets, while you don't give them family structures, homes. You deny them every chance and every opportunity to succeed in this world. You deny it. You holler about protection, but you from black men that you claim aren't going to do it, but you do everything to remove yourself out of his scope of protection. I told you in the last live stream about how you create these hostile environments. 
There is a way to course correct it, but if you're not interested in the solution of it, then you're going to have to shut up about the so-called problem because a lot of this stuff, the majority of this stuff is a self-inflicted wound. You're doing it. And all that deflecting that you doing with black men ain't doing this and black men ain't doing that. You continue to choose to be with these men. Every time we talk about what women need to do, I hear a bunch of gynocrats, a bunch of hyenas. If you're new to my channel, check out the glossary so you'll know what I'm talking about when I say these words. A bunch of gynocrats and hyenas yelping and whooping and hollering about the things they don't got and what's happening to them and how they ain't getting protected and how they ain't getting this and how they ain't getting that. But you don't course correct. You don't accept any correction. You don't accept none. Anytime somebody come to give you a correction, you got a problem with it. No matter how somebody approaches it with you, whether it's harsh, whether it's soft, whether it's a man, whether it's a woman, whether it's a secular approach, a spiritual approach, a religious approach, a loving approach, a, 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 an abrasive approach, it doesn't matter. And I wish y'all would stop capping about that. You know, it's just the way you say it. Boop! No, it's not. That's cap. It's cap. We are in a dire situation. Dire. It's an emergency. We done broke the emergency glass and got the axe out. Ain't nobody got time to poo-poo and tutu you and coddle you and wait for you to lie to yourself 50, 11 times before you can realize one little mistake you might have made that you think you can correct. Like, ain't nobody got time for that. Nobody has time for that. Your children getting shot in these streets don't got time for that. The daughters that don't know how to be women and then they get out here in these streets and get treated a certain kind of way and then now you want to cry victim with them about what somebody shouldn't have done to them maybe you should have taught her how to move maybe you should have taught her who to watch out for who to avoid maybe you should have did a better job but you won't take no responsibility for none of that you sitting around here working with a, an inverse value system that has never served you and you never back up not one time to say, I was wrong. I am wrong. My children suffer. I suffer. The men around me suffer. My father, my brothers. You will send your daddy your brother, your husband, your son, somewhere to their death, and you won't blink an eyelash. Well, somebody did something to me, and you don't care if he got to die to protect honor you don't even have. And you don't mind burying them. Because don't nothing mean nothing to you. And I would say that you were selfish and only you mean something to you, but you don't even care about you. You have no value to yourself. And you provide no value to nobody around you. And until you can figure this out, for those of you who want to be solution oriented, we got solutions over here at the Crimson Kill channel. I don't just yell and act a fool, quote unquote, and tell and read you like a book. We're going to see who takes corrections. This is what you need to have in your life. Get yourself together through, first of all, 
the spiritual value. This is the 10 life value success system. This is a system that is meant to break down the 10 most um, important areas of anybody's life to help you manage your life in all of these areas. It is numbered from one to 10 and the order is important. That spiritual value is the foundation and the base of, on which all the rest of these values stand. If your spiritual value is trash, then everything else is trash. So when we talk about your spiritual value, we are talking about who you are as a person, the principles you stand by, the code you live by, the God you believe in, and how well you stick to any to, to the system and order and structure within a spiritual system. We're not here to tell you what to believe in. We just telling you that you need to have some type of life principle or code that you live by. Most of you black women do not have that or you have it in name only. And it doesn't mean anything when it comes down to your day-to-day -day practices and the decisions that you make in your life whether those decisions affect you personally or they affect the people around you. And most of the time as women, our decisions do not only affect us. Then you have your health value, not just your physical health, which many of you need help with that. You won't even say, look at yourself and say, I need to lose weight that how I'm eating is wrong. You so invested in never being wrong, you gonna die being wrong. You won't see to your mental health, you won't see to your emotional health, you spend so much time on social media trying to get validation from people that you don't know and that don't know you. You spend a lot of time capping about what kind of life you live so that people can try to be envious or jealous of a life that you are not even living. And when you turn that stuff off, you are a miserable human being that don't know where they been, where they are, or where they going. Your family is in shambles. Your, your interactions with your parents, with your siblings, with your kids, with the men in your life are all trash. All of it. Nothing but trash. And this is trash that you sweep up under the rug. You don't have any type of coping mechanism or anything. You don't look for any type of solution to bring about real problem solving so that the things that you're going through with your family can actually be resolved. You just like covering stuff up. Like you cover up not having edges with bad weeds. And you cover up all that acne scars that you got on your face with bad makeup. You just like covering stuff up. You don't like getting down to the root of nothing and figuring it out because it's too hard. Your appearance value is shot both personally and as a collective of women. Everywhere we go, we have the stigma of being stupid, of being confrontational, of being dramatic. And every black woman carry that L regardless of the fact of whether she engages in that behavior or not. Your dwelling value, you don't, the, there is no such thing as peace in your home because you don't bring peace and you're not peaceful at heart. You're not peaceful in your spirit. We're not even going to go through six through 10 because y'all need to do inner work. That's one through five. So we're going to stop at one through five. The reason why you can't be saved out of this is because you can't course correct. And the reason why you can't course correct 
is because you cannot take being wrong. And the reason why you can't take being wrong is because the work to actually be right instead of capping like you right or trying to convince everybody else that you right is too difficult for you and y'all are weak. You think the pick me is weak and the woman that's being feminine and one, it take a lot of strength, especially in this day and age to actually be counter culture and be feminine and be black. And not be ashamed and wear your femininity proudly. It's the weakness where you can't face yourself in that mirror and you can't tell yourself no truth. That's the weakness. You ain't strong, you weak. That's the problem. You ain't strong, black woman, you weak. You're cowardly, you're a coward. That's why you can't take no truth. That's why you can't be saved because it actually takes bravery and courage and the strength of conviction to say, I have been wrong, but I am going to be right. And I'm not going to be right because I say I'm right. I'm going to be right because I'm going to start doing the right things, the true things. I'm going to start seeking and then abiding by the truth. As long as you keep on lying, you ain't never going to come out of this. Only a few black women can really face the truth. We're the feminine ones. We're the lionesses. We don't have to get caught in this. And I personally not going to let you catch me or the women that's around me in this crazy whirlwind. So the question on the table is, are you going to be, are you going to have the courage to actually face the truth once and for all and correct yourself? Or are you so invested in never being wrong that you're willing to die on that hill? Come what may, no matter what happens, you're willing to die on that hill. That's the question. So sound off in the comment section. Like, share, subscribe to the channel if you have not. Once again, I am the Crimson Cure, and this was my perspective. Bye-bye, Crimsonites. Hey, guys. Please like, share, and subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell. And if you've got more to say on the topic, leave a comment down below. Also, don't forget to support our sponsor who so graciously supports this channel by clicking the description box and the link for A-Game at agameherbal.com. You can go ahead and get a 10% discount off of your next purchase using the code Kendra10. This has been yet another Crimson Cure production and I'll catch you guys on the next one.